Welcome back to study tip for IGCSE Biology. Today's topic is related to movement in and movement out of cells. In this chapter, you will find out about diffusion, osmosis, why diffusion and osmosis are important to cells and organism, and finally, active transport. Movement across cell membrane, substances can move into and out of cells through the cell membrane. The three main types of movements are diffusion, osmosis, and active transport. Diffusion. Diffusion is the net passive movement of molecules or particles from region of higher concentration to region of lower concentration. For diffusion to occur, there shall be a concentration gradient. The differences in the amount of solutes, particles or molecules between the two regions will cause them to move between the two regions. Imagine an iron, respiratory gases, glucose, or other particles that move randomly between the crowded and less crowded regions, fluid, often across a semi-permeable membrane. The unequal concentration of the particles between two fluids will generate a gradient that will incite them to move in order to equalize the disparity in concentrations. Nevertheless, the movement of solute during the diffusion process is not a one-way route. There could be movement to and fro. However, the movement is inclined towards the area of lower concentration. Hence, diffusion is characterized by a net movement of the particle down the concentration gradient. It means that from the area of greater concentration to an area of lower concentration. Diffusion and living organism. Product of digestion dissolve in water can pass across the wall of the small intestine by division. Their concentration is higher in a small intestine than their concentration in the blood. So there is a concentration gradient from the intestine to the blood. Oxygen move down a concentration gradient from the air in the ovali to the blood. And the carbon dioxide move down a concentration gradient from the blood to the air in the alveoli. The dissolved substances will only continue to diffuse while there is a concentration gradient. A conclusion. Why diffusion is important to cell and living organism? Because it allows them to gain the useful substances they require to obtain energy and grow and let them get rid of waste product. Let's move on to osmosis. What is osmosis? Osmosis is the diffusion of water molecules from a region of high concentration to a region of lower concentration through a partially permeable membrane. A dilute solution contains a high concentration of water molecule, high water concentration of water molecule, while a concentration solution contains a low concentration of water molecules. Partially permeable membranes are also called selectively permeable membranes 
or semi permeable membranes. They let some substances pass through them, but not others. If you can see here from this side, there is a high water concentration where is lower sugar concentration. And the water molecule can pass through to the other side where we have a lower water concentration and high sugar concentration. Through called as a partially permanent membrane. Okay, so it's the same thing from this diagram is trying to explain the same concept of the process of osmosis where the water molecules from a region of high concentration to a region of lower concentration through a partially permeable membrane. This diagram is the same. Osmosis affect plants and animal cells differently because plant and animal cell can tolerate different concentration of water. If you can see osmosis in animal cells, okay, osmosis is a net movement of water molecule from a region higher water potential solution to a region lower water potential concentration or concentrated solution through a partially permeable membrane. Animal cell also take in and lose water by osmosis. They do not have a cell wall, so will change size and shape when put into solution that are at a different concentration to the cell content. Red blood cell lose water and shrink in a concentrated solution. They swell and burst in a solution that is too dilute. If you can see the two diagram here, what is happening to the animal cell when it puts into a pure water? So, in a dilute solution, you can see that animal cell burst in a pure water, whereby osmosis take place, water diffuses, water diffuses and inflicts. Water diffuses into the cell through the partial membrane cell membrane. And the second diagram is animal cell shrink in a concentrated solution. Where osmosis taken place, water diffuses out of the cell through the partially permeable cell membrane. And it causes the animal, animal cell shrink in a concentrated solution. where more dilute solution inside the cells that it cause the cell shrink. The next we can see is how the osmosis in a plant cell. So plant cell are surrounded by a cell wall. You can see the yellow color is a cell wall. Both diagram you can see is a plant cell. The yellow is actually the cell wall. And it will let any molecules go through it. This is fully permeable. Plant cell do not burst in pure water by osmosis. Plant cell also has cell surface membrane, just like animal cell. The cell membrane is partially permeable. In a more concentrated solution, low water potential, 
The cell contain loose water by osmosis. They shrink and pull away from the cell wall. And the cell become flaccid and it is becoming plasmolized. When you can see that the plant cell becomes swollen and firm in pure water, whereby the osmosis takes place, water diffuses into the cytoplasm and vacuum through the partially permeable cell surface membrane and the cells swell and become firm. Okay. Nevertheless, when osmosis taken place, water diffuses out of the cytoplasm and vacuum through the partially permeable cell membrane. First, the cell shrink slightly and become flaccid. Then the cell membrane pull away from the cell wall and the cell is plasmolyphed. This is the condition happen if you put the plant cell in a more concentrated solution, which is low water potential. Okay, this is what happening to the plant cell. The plant cell become flaccid and may plasmolyphed in concentrated solution. Active transport. Active transport is the movement of particles through a cell membrane from a region of lower concentration to a region of higher concentration using energy from respiration. Example of active transport is uptake of iron from soil water by root hair cell in plants and uptake of glucose in a small intestine in human by epithelial cell in the villi. Why active transport is important to the cell? Because active transport is usually associated with accumulating high concentration of molecule that the cells need, such as iron, glucose, and amino acid. This as a proof in the example given above for the plants and as well as humans. With that, I would like to end my presentation. In conclusion, I would like to stress here, in biology, understanding the subject matter is very important than doing the exercises. So you need to understand the topic and also you need to memorize the scientific terms. That's all about biology. Thank you very much.